friends, today we have with us uh, Denzel Franco, uh, current international footballer from Goa, uh, who has been representing India for the last eight, uh, six years, I believe. Uh, correct, Denzel? Yeah. Welcome, Denzel, first. And Thank you. Uh, good to have you with us, uh, being the current footballer and current international. Can you tell me something when you started your football in, I mean, when you started playing with the ball first? It was, uh, I think, uh, way back in 1997 when I was just uh, uh, 11, 12 years old. 12 years old. Yeah. So you started playing football at the age of 12. Yeah. Uh, was that a competitive level you started or it was just like you were playing at home? I want to know when you touched the football first, how did you get into the neck of playing football? What was it that made you feel that I should play football? Actually, it's the, uh, my father being an ex-footballer uh, okay. based in Mumbai, okay. he always wanted, uh, we being seven children, always wanted one okay. of his son to be a sportsman, a sportsman. Footballer, footballer especially. Okay. So, he saw that talent in me. Okay. You know, and I was studying in uh, uh, Lutz Convent, Convent in Salina itself. Okay. So, he thought that the school was not too friendly with the uh, football. football okay. And he got me admitted in uh, St. Anthony's High School, Montedigiri. Where football is more friendly. Very good. You know, a lot of competitions. This is all happening around 12, at the age of 12. Also. At the age of 12. Yeah, 12, 11, 12, 11. That exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, there's a time in 97, I joined St. Anthony's High School, Monte de Giri. St. Anthony's High School. Very, yes. known, very well known very, for football. Exactly. Yeah, I know. And then, uh, uh, it all started from Monte It started from the age level tournaments from 112, 114, and, and so on. So you played for Goa first at the age of uh, under 12, under 14? I played for Goa at the age of... Uh, when I was uh, 14 years old, and under, was 15. under 15. Under 15. And then, uh, did you represent India in the juniors in the football? Yeah, I represented India. First time was in uh, JRD Tata Cup held in Jharkhand. Okay. It was for there were two teams. One was TFA India TFA White and India TFA Blue. Okay. So I was in the A team uh, along with three Mumbai players, and uh, that was the start with the national under junior team. Okay. So you played for Goa under 15 and straight away you were reckoned for the Indian junior team and you were on the highlights. Uh, what are the, you are you are what position you play uh, at actually in the? I, I am an uh, original defender okay. and uh, play as a right wing back. Okay. Uh, so you are more of a defense defense uh, defense player who goes on to score goals. You know? Exactly. You can say that I am a defender plus I take more of a most of a flyer sort of. A that's that's what I am more known in in Indian football because okay. they say that Denzel Franco is a good a player who does good overlapping. Overlapping means okay. when you especially when you. Uh, there's a way counter attack comes. That, that is the time you exactly. go, on, uh, go, exactly. on, go and fire it well. Yeah, because uh, next, uh, normally the, the opponents don't expect uh, defenders to come and attack. And when you have an, an extra man from the defense going and joining the attack, it gives you advantage for the team to have more number of players in the attack line and score some goals or maybe have some good crosses. Ex uh, I understand that the counter attack. It was a, the fast brief. You have to make uh, the opponents come back and save uh, even your offsides uh, rules and break those things. Yeah. Exactly. So going back to, as you said, you played India Juniors and you played for Goa and you moved on to play for India Juniors. Yeah. Uh, were you sensing that you someday you'll be getting the India cap already when you took the India Juniors uh, jersey off? Yeah, you know, see, it's a dream for any sportsman to play for the country. Whatever it is, whether it's junior or senior. Exactly. Once you get the Indian team or the national yeah. team on, it's it like it. Yeah, and, and as uh, my father's dream was always to see me playing for the national team. Yeah. No matter which team, and it started with the junior team, which he made him, gave him happiness. And gradually it went on, went on, because I never looked... Uh, thinking that you know it will happen and like I have to play I didn't set some uh, uh, pressure on me that I have to play for the national team I just went with the flow, with the flow. I, I just played for the uh, junior teams and as, as uh, years went by I, I caught up with the national senior team as well because then it gives you confidence you, you know, moved on yeah, yeah. Uh, getting back getting to the junior team zone get back to that A, the A zone uh, and of course you have the memory for it you played for India. Which were the club you were playing at that time? Which were were you playing in the Premier League, India Premier League already at, at the age of 19, 20? Were you knocking uh, leagues, leagues on at that? 2003, I got uh, graduate, graduated from Cesar Football Academy. Okay, great. And I was uh, spotted by Saloka Sports Club. Okay, I joined them in 2003 for a three-year contract. Okay. And uh, 
since I joined the senior team, I was a very young lad at that time and I, I could not make it in the senior team. Playing level also. Yeah, so I was in the junior uh, under 19 yeah, yeah, Salonga yeah, yeah. and we were having these national leagues. And yeah, yeah. Then you play for Goa, then play for India, yeah. it went all like that. Yeah. So I was with the uh, junior team and playing for the Salongas only. Salongas, yeah. When you played the seniors, which was the first club you striked for the seniors to know? Uh, Salongas. Salongas itself. Yeah, it's so the Salongas considered you after your performance and they took it up to you, the seniors. Exactly, yeah. So you did not have to take a transfer or move around here. And, uh, no, I was with Salongas for three year contract, but I could not complete a contract for of three years because there was no much opportunity for me to play. Play there. So I thought. Uh, which is your uh, team which you moved on to and that strike you good for playing for India? That was uh, Sporting Club Digo, definitely. That okay. was the platform for me when I exactly. really started my career in a very. Uh, this is what I wanted to know from you because that's yeah. I'm trying to get you to that uh, point, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it was from Sporting Club Digo and from Panjim. Okay. Who is doing really good in the I League as well now. Okay. And uh, it was uh, very good for me because I had my local. Uh, uh, players also from backing, my village, backing backing from my local yeah. uh, village players like yeah. uh, Bibiano Fernandez who was my village mate okay. and he was in the sporting club so he would give me a lot of tips and ideas about how to get into this stage of uh, football, you know, this level of football. Goals have always produced uh, ex extraordinary footballers. We have had Bruno Coutinho, we had Brahmanan Sagar, Camilo Gonzalez, Roa Barreto, Savio Medeiros, a lot of them. Uh, Mauricio Alfonso, for your type of a player, who, who Mauricio Alfonso was the, one of, uh, was a person uh, who, who should, I think, what was you doing the job, what you are doing right now. Yeah. Uh, what was your idol from a uh, person whom you looked up like and who really went on in future to help you also maybe? Actually, uh, you took his name first. That was Bruno Coutinho. Okay. He's been my idol for, for the last, I mean, since the time I've seen him. Because I remember uh, Bruno being a Kalangut guy. I mean, okay. he lives in Kalangut. Okay. I used to always wait after my school to see that Bruno Coutinho passes from my house because he was really my idol. I was really a big fan of Bruno. Okay. And uh, the very first match, National League, match what I've seen in India and in Goa was Bruno Coutinho okay. playing for Salgongas. It was a big derby match between Tempo and Salgongas mm -hmm. and my father just happened to take me to the stadium to watch this match. Father and stadium. Father stadium. And Bruno had this long hair which yeah, I yeah, was yeah. really fascinated yeah. about and uh, I really liked the way he played at that time. With the Did long you wear his hair any time during your career? Exactly, I had my long hair. You had your long hair. Till 2010, 2010. which uh, then a coach called David Booth in my He had some discipline. Okay. He said like, uh, it's not going to be fine as a defender to have long yeah. hair. So I had to cut it off. Okay, okay, great. So Bruno has been your idol and uh, Bruno Coutinho, of course. Uh, international way, did you look up to somebody uh, in a, in a, who is your favorite player in the world? It always used to be Kafu, Kafu from okay. Brazil. Okay. Uh, that's the, the tall position. guy. The, the, yeah, the yeah, tall yeah, guy. Tall I mean, there's, guy. There's the position I'm playing at this point of time, okay. right back. And after Kafu, it's been Denny Alves, who's playing for Barcelona okay. at this point of time, a Brazilian player. Okay. And uh, I really look at him because uh, now in the modern football, I feel he's one of the best uh, right backs in the world. Okay. So, Denny Alves. Denny Alves. As you said, you were playing for Sporting the Cup uh, of Goa or whatever and you just moved on to play for India. Uh, how did you feel and how? what was the occasion? How did you receive the message getting selected for India? How it all happened? Can you just put it on? Yes, actually see, the, the year I joined Sporting Club Digo as a junior player, I was I was drafted into the senior team by Sporting Club and I played most part of the Goa League as under 20 player with the sporting uh, squad. Okay. And uh, I, was, I used to start almost all the matches as, uh, in the first level. The as, as being the under 20, under 20 category. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And that really worked uh, because that is one good thing what GFA has done uh, for Goan footballers. Young, youngsters were coming up that they should have two under 20 players playing in the squad so that the youngsters come up in, in, in that level. So this was happening only in the Goa League. In the Goa League. Yes. Okay, great. It's not happening in the India level. It's like happening that. now in the National League. I okay. Think, where yeah, you need okay. to have 123 players, 200. Exactly, players. exactly. It just started this year. This has been happening in most of the sports now, where they have put a category of 119s and 125s compulsory, and that's happening to get more youngsters inside the exactly. league. Exactly. Yeah. So Sporting started the first year was mostly as under 20 player. The second year I started getting into the team as. Super sub, you can say, because they would get ah, me. Super the, sub. Yeah, they would get me into the last 20 minutes or 15 minutes or so. And um, the last year, the third year of my contract with Sporting was great. I mean, I started playing the first team, and that was the real start for me to be in the to get a call in the national team because definitely the national coaches they look at players who are playing in the first team. You know, so that <coughs> it was Bob Houghton then, the coach of national team. Okay, Bob Houghton, it's during the Nehru Cup, was it that? Uh, no, this was in 2008 during the uh, Hong Kong friendlies, he okay. called me for this camp. That was the first camp I attended for the, with the national team. Okay. 
and um, definitely uh, Mr. Peter was the boss of Sporting Club played a big role for for giving me this opportunity playing in the national team. I mean, playing for the club, as well as the coach, uh, Mr. Chug uh, Clifford Chuguama, Nigerian coach. He played a big role for me, for me as well because they really liked the way I played, and as a young player, they really gave, kept on motivating me. Great. So it started from there. Uh, so you got the call from the national team, and then you were in the probables for the camp, and then you walked into side. How much? How was the team like? No, almost it's 22 players, right? It was a, a 30 member squad with Baichan Bhutia and all the big stars of and the captain. Who was, yes. who was the captain? Who was the captain? Bhutia was the captain, and I was a very I was the youngest player in the squad. Okay. And um, I although I could not make it in the first team, you know the the first uh, camp. But you were with the team all the time. I was always with the team, but yeah. the. At the end, what happens is they cut down to 22 players. 22. That's what I exactly wanted to know. Yes, yeah. They, tra they travel uh, out of India with the. Uh, yeah, the eight are out. Like they, they stay as a standby. They, so. they keep it as a standby. So yeah. that's the time it all happened. The time to be kept out. But I didn't take it as a setback. I always kept myself going on because I I knew that I would make it one day. Mm. And uh, so came a day for me that uh, India had to send an under 23 team to Bangladesh to play the South Cup, where I was the like you know playing in the first team. And um, you made a debut. My debut was from against whom it was. Uh, we played a first match against Nepal, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, it was under 23, or it was open game. It was open tournament. Mm -hmm. India sent under 23. Ah, India sent under 23. I was a senior player in that okay. in the squad, and myself with another two three guns. So luckily, we won the cup. It was the first uh, uh, major international cup which I won for the national team. It was in Bangladesh 2009. Right. Right. Very good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, since then the journey has been very fruitful. Were you part of the team when uh, India beat Syria in the 2-1 in the Nehru Cup? Uh, the game, the great, I mean that was the best part, phase of the Indian football I believe in recent uh, at area. Uh, Were you part of a team like that when Bachin Bhatia and Shetri, actually Shetri scored a goal or I, I wouldn't uh, say that I was part of the team in the first team but I was on the uh, bench. Not on the bench as well. I was so in the squad. The squad, again. yeah. Okay. I was always in the squad. So, yeah. But could not make it in the first team as, a, as a young player. But I made my. That was particularly in 2008 or 2009. Not yes, so I, was, I was like in and out. But okay. My real test started in 2011 uh, under Bob Orton itself, uh, where we played the uh, uh, AFC qualifiers okay. in Malaysia. Okay. Where I was on the bench and. Uh, the second match we were playing against Pakistan and we were down 1-0. Okay. And coach thought that he needs to get me because the player who was playing on the right position was uh, little down on that day. Did little down on that day. Yeah. So he asked me to like Denzel, I want you to go and give you to play a natural game. That is just do overlapping and have some crosses. And luckily, to my luck, like you know, the both the goals what we scored was through my crosses. Okay, great. So it was a very good. So start you made your you made your presence felt already. Exactly. Yeah. So that was a very good start for me with the national senior team. Okay. I mean, with on and off breaks in the national team, this was a good start. That was against Pakistan, then uh, as well. Pakistan, and the last match was against uh, Turkmenistan. Okay. It was a draw, although it was a draw, but we had a very good game. Yeah, but it was a tough game, I believe. Exactly, it yeah. was a tough game, and uh, it was not so important match for us because we are already qualified for okay. the next round. But uh, we played this match. Uh, Have you been a part of Indian team? In the World Cup qualifiers? Yeah, I've been under Armando Colasso in the squad. Okay. okay. On the bench. On the bench. But you have been in the 22. I have been in the 22. So you are part of the Indian team in the World Cup qualifiers as well. Exactly. That was played in UAE and. Yeah, uh, UAE. I think you lost to UAE 4 1 or 3 1. And then in Delhi it was a 2 2. 2 2, two draw. Very, very, that was an astounding uh, draw and uh, we expected India to do something exactly. at that particular time. Yeah. But later on went on to lose to some weaker teams, I believe. Yeah, but the thing is, it was a uh, rain uh, full uh, ground, you know, in Delhi. But holding UAE, because yeah. I know the UAE team very well, so you holding the UAE team 2-2 yeah. uh, was, I, I remember that, I was very surprised myself, because getting that news when UAE was held back for 2-2 and uh, I thought like India has really changed the level of football and something's going to happen. Yeah. And I believe, because the Goans and especially the Goans and the Kerlites and the way the football is played in Bengal. Uh, I believe that India should surely be having uh, natural footballers to play in the World Cup. It's only the uh, at the level which we are not able to achieve, uh, I believe. But our players can achieve, if they're not nothing less with, uh, with their physical fitness, if they move on and play, yeah. if somebody takes them, if there's a godfather somewhere, yeah. and say, I'm taking uh, uh, Denzel and I'm making him play for Liverpool, I'm sure he's going to stand the same levels to many of the stars what we see now. Exactly. So I hope uh, people do understand that the football in India and Goa basically, uh, the players are the, almost the category levels the same but what happens the grooming, the academy, a lot of things are taking place now yeah. but if it moves on we can have, what do you think India is going to make it to the World Cup someday? Uh, 
it has to start from grassroots level which uh, but are we doing something are we doing so are we doing something i know you're still in the playing yeah. and you cannot comment such hard on the uh, because you're still with the uh, federation uh, you cannot say anything yeah. but i think there's a lot to be done i think uh, aff has started uh, with grassroots level and uh, even gfa has goa i think is the only state you know amongst all the other states in the country that uh, have more emphasis on uh, the youth development which is really a good thing but what i've got to say is uh, i've done this c license afcc license coaching co course recently and we got to know that the kids needs to be get into the field got to get into the field is from the age of 6 to 7 you can't see boys playing like denzel getting onto the field exactly. at the age of 11. 11 if you want players to play in your in the world cup you want indian national team to get into world cup first get the infrastructure right get the players very the early 6 and 7 yeah at the age of 6 and 7 just make them understand what is football don't make them run or whatever exactly understand exactly what is a the football they need to know what is a football right. and it, it starts from there you know and, and the age, fear of uh, injury is the fear of the ball everything has to go and then you reach by 11 or 10 you're almost there playing exactly. ready to compete even the 19 years because i feel players like rooney and neymar all these they are playing in the world cups at the age of 18 19 and 20 it's only because they have started from at early very age very early yeah so indian players if we get get on 6 and 7 years age definitely the players will be groomed getting groomed up by 16 years for sure to at the at the top level at the top, level. top level and they can really and with with good facilities with them. hopefully hopefully we look at least to the next uh, keep a uh, target about next 12 years or next uh, third world cup from now on India makes it somewhere because it's not it's not a, it's not that difficult some luck here and there and some wins with the uh, quality of footballers we have and something can happen you know? exactly. coming back to yourself uh, danzel you played for india and then the feeling you had to play you played for sporting the club they go after that you moved on to any club and change anything on that let me get back to you about sagunkas you know yeah. being a football die hard fan from goa i was always uh, looking sagunkas as my was my team you know it was my favorite team because of bruno first of all and then salonkas always meant saligao okay. you know so it was always like i was supporting salonkas and after uh, really doing good in the sporting team i thought i got a offer from salonkas where i thought okay that's my dream team let me get back over there and see what i can do best because i already get got to that level but unfortunately they were relegated in the in that year the previous year and they had some differences with the iff which they could not stay in the league and since i had already signed with the club the club had given me an noc like if you want to join a bigger club you can join but the secretary of the club mr raj gomes requested me like you know if you can stay back because that will have the team in this crisis exactly yeah. and i thought yes i would do except and i good. had a year contract with salonkas but unfortunately there were changes in the coaches in the squad and there was differences the differences being made and whatever so i thought it was time for me to move on and um, then came i thought let me go out of goa because mahindra was one of the teams the eyeing me at that time they had a very good offer for me and i thought that would be the very good option for me being out of goa and very close to goa as well that's in mumbai so i was in mahindra for a year under coach david put okay and uh, mahindra gave a very good uh, option support for, for me support for me to get back to that level where i had missed one year like playing in the i league for sporting and then going back to second division with salvo you had a lapse you had, had a lapse yeah which, uh, i unfortunately i had to lose on the national team call up as well but uh, like, uh, you worked your way come back i worked my way come out uh, come back with with the mahindra team, team. Yeah. and uh, played a very good season in mahindra that, that was in 2012 that was in 2010 10 yeah okay. so i had a very good season in mahindra and Mahindra had uh, had to be disbanded that year. Okay. And again, it was a, again it was a it bad was luck for you. Bad luck for me, yeah. but luckily for me, there were clubs waiting to take me from Calcutta and Goa. In fact, Salonga had approached to me. Back second time. And uh, third time. Third time, yeah, junior year. Yeah, and uh, even uh, there was Churchill Brothers who approached to me, and I thought this was the one club that I haven't played in Goa. That was Churchill and Brothers. Churchill Brothers, and I thought I would like to go into in, in this club because this club is one club where they have a lot of passion for football. Mr. Bo, uh, Mr. Churchill Arima, my boss. He is very passionate about football. So is his family, his children. They are they are very much in in the lot of interest in the game. Lot of interest. Personal interest. Yeah. So I thought it would be great playing with this team and playing with this family. So I thought it was a, it was a good option. So your current player for Churchill Brothers. I am with Churchill Brothers at the moment. Yeah. Uh, from Mahindra, you moved on to Churchill, Churchill Brothers. Brothers, and you stayed on for last two years. I think. I've been for the last four years. Four years. Great. Yes, so so you're stuck. How how well is the league organized and how the things move on? How how your travel plan? How you make everything available? Uh, look, that this all goes with the club uh, uh, management. 
manage my career. How the how the so you have a busy schedule basically. Even being a footballer from India, yeah. it's not only the cricketers of India who have the busy schedule. I think it's all the footballers. I, I think it's more than cricketers. Yeah, because, because you play more games. Because we've been travelling all over India. I mean, if you want to travel to uh, Shillong, yeah, that's one uh, northeast uh, state where you have to travel for two days because you don't have a direct flight over there. And then it's like you go from Goa to Mumbai, Mumbai to Calcutta. Have a overnight stay. More, and more of this, so and then a lot of fitness things also take place. A lot of early camps. Yeah. So you're always around the 365 days. I think you're occupied almost a yeah, 200. And then if there's a break in the I League, uh, maybe a 15 or 20 days break. break, I'm with the national team there. Okay. So I hardly get any time with my family or uh, spend time for myself. Take rest. That's it's all. But I'm happy with this because football is my life. I Talking of your family, your father and your uh, I mean parents. You're with your parents. Uh, I believe the parents are. Uh, you're married already? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So he's an eligible bachelor. <laughs> uh, and uh, it goes on to ask to you something on the personal grounds. As you said, your father was looking forward to play for uh, in the football at the highest levels, and you went on to do it. How was the feeling he got about it? And uh, what were the words he spoke to you? Uh, before I say anything, unfortunately, my father is no more. Just okay. four months back, he passed away. Sorry, yeah. Passed away, but uh, it was a dream come true for him because just before I could leave to Kolkata, because he died on Feb 18th, okay. and on 15th of February, I had a chat with him before I could leave to the airport, and uh, he just had a chat and he said. Uh, Son, I'm very happy and proud of you that you have achieved all the major trophies in the country with the national team as well as with the club. And uh, I'm, I'm proud of you. That was the feeling what he had, he just expressed. You know, that was the last time, last I spoke. time you spoke to him. And that was what he spoke about. Oh. I, I, it's kind of surprising for me that why did he speak uh, all these things on that day because when I was living. But uh, it, it happens sometimes, it happens, you yeah. know, your ear is there and you speak about all these things. Yes, and then soon came the. Uh, I travelled with the team to Kolkata to play East Bengal and on 18, my, there was a match in the evening, I got a news in the morning that my father is no more, so I had to travel back, back to, for the I was supposed to travel with Churchill Brothers to uh, Singapore uh, to play the AFC match, but uh, I could not make the trip, I, I came back and if at all, if uh, you know, my family didn't mention to me that he is no more, they just told me he's very serious, but if they had to mention to me that my father was no more, I would have played that match against East Bengal because for him, football was everything. Exactly. For him, to see me play, play was the his dream. Exactly. His happiness. So I thought maybe if I had to play that match and come back, it would be great. It happens like that. The families play a big role in your success. Exactly. It's happened in my life also. A lot of things uh, where uh, my mom was very serious and I'm playing at the highest level of cricket and the message doesn't come through and then you come to know about it and you just work. A lot of things happen like that and you just, it's as a, as a professional sport, uh, sports person, yeah. you have to think about what is asked from you. Yeah. You are just a belonging to something yeah. and you go on with it. Mm -hmm. uh, great, uh, that was a great thing you shared and I, I did not know about this and it just came off. It was very nice. Yeah. Uh, coming to your personal life again, uh, you are with your mom and you you still travel, how the things go on, you are still a bachelor so it's going fine. Uh, how long, when you plan your marriage, what's happening about it? Uh, about my marriage, uh, I have been, uh, after my father's death, it's been a bit difficult for, for my family to take the loss and uh, my brothers are all settled in their own ways. Uh, one is in uh, UK, uh, abroad. Yeah, different places. They are, they are all settled in their own lives and uh, my mother, I live with You are the youngest? I am the youngest. Okay. Yeah, so I live with my mother Yeah. and now it's the time my mother says that you are need somebody at home. to get settled along so yeah. that you have your uh, companion. So probably it, it might happen next year. Very soon. Very, very soon. soon. Yeah. I hope so. Uh, coming Rezul, uh, current World Cup scene is happening. Uh, you have been watching the game so you must be busy doing your uh, uh, coaching yeah. courses. What do you feel like who is going to be in the World Cup? My favourites are always Brazil. I've yeah. been supporting Brazil. Uh, they are doing good but uh, I can say Mexico, Chile, and Argentina also has a striking. Good, yeah, there's there is good scope for these teams as well to make it to the finals. And you have been playing for India. How many Goans along with you have been doing that, sharing the honors along with you? How many? How many you can name? Few of them. It's been always like. Or most of the time, there are more Goans in the national team. So the last time I've played with the national team, it's been five Goans. It's been like myself, uh, Francis Fernandez, Lenny Rodriguez, uh, Clifford Miranda, and uh, Vittorino Fernandez. It's been like five always players. five of you are moving on. Mo most of them. There are players who are on and off. Eight, uh, eight. Suppose take the like eight, ten, seven. They keep moving, but uh, on the roll, there are five of them playing. 
five of them different. Any talent to be mentioned on the go on zone? Uh, I heard some players talking about one particular player. Any anything you know about your current teammates from Goa? You, do you still play for Goa while playing for India? Does it happen? Because uh, you are not allowed to play for the. You, did you how many games you played for Santosh Trophy? Santosh Trophy. Uh, the first year when I was under Mariano Dice, the, the Santosh Trophy was he, was held in Chennai. I could not make it to the team because I was injured the last day before the team could travel. But uh, the next year I joined the team in Cal uh, Calcutta with the Santosh Trophy. And uh, we we lost in the semi-finals. We so lost to Maharashtra. We lost to Bengal in the semi-finals. Okay. Yeah. So Santosh Trophy. Uh, mostly what happens now after that, we national team players or the I League players cannot play in the Santosh Trophy because they give more opportunity to the youngsters to make their from, mark. Yeah. To make their so mark. they get selected for the I League. Because what happens if we get uh, the I League players have been so tight uh, schedule. Nobody will move. Nobody yeah. will move. So yeah. It's it's been very difficult for the I League players to play in the Santosh Trophy. The, so the GFA thinks that. The youngsters come up and play for the Santosh Trophy, like the first division players playing in the first division Goa League, and they perform for the state team. Ranjal, again coming back, uh, there was a time when uh, the players were selected after playing Santosh Trophy. You have played, uh, I think, more international games than the lesser, lesser the number of games in Santosh Trophy. Exactly. I think the team is selected for the nationals, uh, international side, or the Indian team, not more of the I League. I think. From I League, yeah. Yeah, so that's the, the factor has changed. It's, it's, more, not just it's, the it's, it's more of I League now than uh, Santosh Trophy. Ranjal, you have been doing so much and playing so much of football all the time now and playing for the national team. You have done almost the maximum. You, uh, what do you plan after you are playing football? What do you plan about that? You know, what What is there in life for you after playing, just just playing football? Uh, you see, n never no one asked me, nobody asked me about what do I do after football because if you remove football from Denzel, Denzel is no way. I mean, whatever I have today, whatever I am today is all because of football. And definitely I will want to get back, give back something in return to the generation coming up. You know, so in that uh, way I have decided to, since I was having a two months break now, I just uh, did the C license, AFC C license coaching course which was held in Mapsa Dule. And uh, it was a fruitful one. Hopefully, I get passed in that uh, uh, license. And uh, once the certificate is there, I will look for the f uh, for the li uh, grade. Uh, so you you want to go ahead in the coaching? Uh, exactly. I, as I you said, want to get more footballers for India, for Goa, and whatever levels. Whatever I have learned in my whole career, I want to give back to the great, kids. Great, great, I want to give back to the kids, and if if that can really give me satisfaction, satisfaction, it will be great. I mean, all the best for thank that. Thank you so much. Ranjal, uh, it's nice having you with me on the chat and uh, we wish you good luck in the future. I want you to tell the youngsters or the sports personalities something, what you would ask them to do in life, how you would put it up to them. I would say uh, hard work has no substitute. I mean, just keep on working hard. Uh, success will follow you. Uh, that's it. I mean, there is no substitute for hard work. So just going, just keep on going and keep focused. Uh, I mean, keep away from things that will keep you distracted and just just move on. That's it. Thanks, Nanzo. Nice Thanks. having you on the chat. Thank you so much. We don't do this.